Hello, and welcome to A Sound Constitution here on CALY 101.7 FM, a show where we focus on health topics important to our community. This year's team is made up of eight third-year VIU nursing students, and our goal is to demystify health issues and address common misconceptions by sharing evidence-informed information from a variety of reliable resources. All information provided on our show will be available in our show notes on our Facebook and Instagram pages. We want to remind our listeners that the information presented in the show is for educational purposes only and does not replace the advice of your primary healthcare professional. If you have any questions or concerns about what's being discussed, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook at A Sound Constitution, Instagram at C H L Y A Sound Constitution, all one word, our Twitter at ASC underscore VIU, or email us at asoundconstitution at gmail.com. We would like to start our show by acknowledging that we are on the unceded territory of the Stunemoch people, with a broadcasting range that overlaps the Kawatsan and the Sly Amman territories. This acknowledgement is done with gratitude to the Stunemoch people and with the intention to increase awareness about truth and reconciliation processes and efforts on Vancouver Island. Additional information and resources surrounding Stunemoch history Reconciliation, Protocol, and Land Acknowledgement can be found on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. We want to thank all of our viewers for tuning in and for being here with us today. Welcome to our radio show. My name is Jamie and I will be facilitating today's discussion. This is the first episode of our new season, so to start things off right, we felt we could do a little meet and greet so you could get to know the team. In the studio today, we have Cedric, Lauren, Stella, Luke, Lara, Nicole, Shan, and myself. And we are very excited to discuss various health topics with you this season. Since we're all students here, we'd like to break the ice with a question. So I want to ask everyone, what is the most unhinged thing you have done to get an assignment in on time? Hi, I'm Lauren. The most unhinged thing that I've done to get an assignment on time? Well... I'm usually really good about getting my work done on time, but in the past, I have stayed up until about 3 in the morning to get an assignment completed before an 8.30 a.m. class that morning. I think, looking back, I drank about two venti Starbucks coffees that day, and I was so wired that I had palpitations all day. Oh, well, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Two venti Starbucks are definitely no joke. Um, I don't recommend. I can only imagine how your sleep was that night. But thank you for sharing. How about you, Lara? I'm Lara. Um, so we had this essay on nursing theory due, and I kind of found myself in this like really deep rabbit hole researching uh, Joyce Travelby, who is my favorite theorist. And uh, then I realized I really wanted to read her book um, before I wrote the paper. So I convinced my prof to give me an extension and told her it would be so much more interesting if I could read Travel B's book first. Um, And I just enjoyed writing that paper so much. Well, I think that was a great idea. I honestly am so thankful for all the teachers the past three years who have given me extensions. I find them to be very understanding and reasonable as long as you ask on time. I'm super thankful for that. How about you, Stella? What's your most unhinged moment? Um, The most unhinged one I probably had was I had a biology lab due at midnight that I completely forgot about, and me and my friends were watching a movie at 11.30 p.m., um, and then I realized that I still had an assignment due, so they all lined up and helped me uh, perform experiments for my biology lab and were my little lab rats, and... uh, helped me write my summary afterwards, giving me ideas from the experiments that they were the lab rat for. And we got it done in record time and even had, I think, 10 minutes left before it was due. Well, that sounds like quite the success and that um, you all worked together and got it done. So good for you guys. It also sounds like you have really good friends. Thank you for sharing. Does anybody want to go next? Hi, I'm Cedric. And the most unhinged thing I've done in school is that uh, one time my first year of nursing had a research paper due and I'd never written one before and I severely underestimated the amount of work that it would take me to write it. So naturally, I put off most of the work until the day the assignment was due, worked all the way through the night with coffee, of course, and I barely got it done on time. And after that, I quickly learned that I would have to start my work way earlier than it was due because I procrastinate a lot. 
I also procrastinate a lot. I must admit, I am improving, but I still have a long ways to go. So thank you for sharing. I understand. How about you, Shan? Hello, everyone. My name is Shan. Um, I have also experienced pulling all-nighters, sacrificing sleep, and personal time to finish an assignment. However, I believe most students have also experienced that, so that is not very uncommon. Um, but yeah, I cannot recall any particularly extreme measures I have taken to meet an assignment deadline. I am actually the type of student who hates procrastinating. So as a result, I established deadlines for my assignments way ahead of their um, actual due dates. Yeah, being organized and getting your assignments in sooner than later is definitely a good skill set to have as a university student. And I can tell, Shan, that you're really organized, um, and I'm sure that's all going to pay off for you. Thank you for sharing. How about um, you, Nicole? Hmm. Aside from having two carrier pigeons deliver my assignment across town during a snowstorm, <laughs> I'm only joking. I can't really think of anything unhinged I've ever done to get an assignment in on time, other than pulling an all-nighter to meet a deadline. But that's pretty typical for me. Yeah, me too, unfortunately. Um, but I must admit, sometimes procrastinating can bring out the best work in me. But other times, it can be a total nightmare. So I try really hard to refrain from that, but I totally get it. <laughs> How about you, Luke? As far as the most unhinged thing I've ever done for an assignment is I, once upon a time, just decided not to submit the assignment. <laughs> and uh, it did go so well. So that was a motivation to be less of a procrastinator. Um, I also like to indulge in coffee, though. And, uh, yeah, you can catch me uh, working on bibliographies and doing final edits in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, what about you, Jamie? Thank you for sharing, Luke. Um, the most unhinged thing I have done to get an assignment in on time was going through a Starbucks drive through and getting four espresso shots of my coffee because my friend does it all the time. And I thought, because she can do it, I could do it. And um, it just did not go well at all. But I do admit that I did get the assignment in on time. I just think that it was probably the worst paper I had ever written. Um, but yeah, that is my answer. Thanks for answering, everybody. So next, we would like to dive into something a little bit more specific about our program. So could you all share a bit about your personal interests in nursing and what are your unique interests? So I'm Lauren again. Um, my personal interest is hospital nursing. I really love pathophysiology. So uh, anything in acute care is really interesting to me. I just love being in a hospital with patients. I love helping them, hearing their stories. Even things like changing dressings, hanging IV meds, doing assessments. I also really like working alongside my coworkers and a team. One of my unique interests is exploring more about the mind-body connection and something called psychoneuroimmunology and how PTSD and trauma can link into that. So psychoneuroimmunology is a field of study that explores the interactions between your central nervous system and your immune system. And it can show how stress, hormones, and inflammation can affect your health and well-being. You know, I have heard of this concept before. It's a good interest to have. I think it's a very uh, holistic way of thinking of things, which I like. I'll have to look into it more. But thank you for sharing, Lauren. How about you, Lara? So my special interest is nursing research. Um, I'm particularly interested in psychedelic-assisted therapy, um, mental health treatments, uh, palliative care and particularly like knowledge translation and mobilization, like taking um, research data and then figuring out how to make it um, easily understood by the public, right? So that we can apply it and improve our health. Um, I want to change the world through conducting nursing research uh, to use data to drive health policy change in the future that'll benefit everyone. And I invite our listeners to send us messages with any ideas you might have in terms of change that you might like to see in the healthcare system and Perhaps what area of research uh, you would give in unlimited funding to if you could. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Lara. Um, we all encourage you to send us a message regarding what interests you. And I think your story was really inspiring. I can say with certainty that Lara is already a really good researcher and presenter and good at explaining things. So I think you'll go really far with that. So thank you for sharing. And um, how about you, Stella? Uh, my personal interest is in pediatric nursing. I've always wanted to. Um, 
do something in that lines in hospital. I uh, got the privilege to work with the Stollery Children's Hospital in Edmonton and um, heard so many inspiring stories about what these kiddos have to go through. And it definitely pushed me to want to help them in any way I could. And it, to me, that was nursing. Um, I'm also super interested in mental health and believe it's just as important to take care of and is often overlooked. So I'm hoping to be able to bring that into my nursing as well. Yeah, I like those interests, Stella. I always think that maybe one day I will work with children. I know as of right now, I like working in geriatrics, but I can see that happening. I do love kids. They're so sweet and they need us. So it makes me happy to hear when people are interested in that uh, field of nursing. How about you, Cedric? For me, my personal interest is nursing is that I love learning about the functions of the human body and how disease and illness affects it. Um, I also love that you get to work with people and connect with them. And it kind of nursing allows you to meet so many different types of people that come from different backgrounds. And you can work in so many different areas, which really opens up a lot of possibilities, which I think is really neat. Um, and I think it's kind of cool that you can kind of continuously learn new things as new technologies and treatments arise. And you can kind of see the real time evolution of medicine and the science of um, health. And one of my unique interests is that I love surgery, anything to do with the operating room I'm obsessed about. Um, I just find it so fascinating and I find it really impressive how far we have come in terms of the technology when operating um, on people. And I'm also an avid reader. I love reading about the history of medicine, ancient history, and biology as well. Well said, Cedric. Um, I also agree that our nursing profession is just going to offer so many different opportunities. You're never really stuck in one avenue of nursing. Um, and I'm super thankful for that. And I'm also really impressed that you read biology books on your spare time. So thank you for sharing, Cedric. How about you, Shan? Um, so my personal interest in nursing at present, I find myself inclined more towards emergency nursing or cardiac nursing. I really like working in a fast-paced, challenging, and unpredictable work environment. And that's exactly how I perceive emergency or cardiac nursing. And also, I really want to practice my critical thinking skills more. And I want to develop expertise in handling complex medical conditions. Um, and I think those areas really help me do that. Um, for my unique interest, I don't think I have something unique to share, but if there was, maybe it would be that I love binge watching Korean dramas, specifically mystery or psychological thriller dramas. I like solving mystery problems, mystery puzzles or riddles, which is also why my friends and I often go to lock escape rooms a lot. I have still never been to an escape room and I really need to go. <laughs> I think that um, those interests are really good to have, especially as a nurse, because I think we are going to have many problems and mysteries to solve. So um, I think that will prove to be effective in having that as a skill set. Thank you for sharing, Shan. And how about you, Nicole? I have a really special place in my heart for palliative care and helping those that are dealing with life-limiting illnesses and those that are facing their end of life. I feel that maybe I'm a bit unique in that I feel very comfortable sitting with those that are facing death. I find peace in those moments, helping folks transition to whatever might come after this life. I trained as an end-of-life doula and studied thanatology. That's the study of death and dying to enhance my knowledge around how to provide quality of life to those facing whatever bit of life they have left. My goals are to help people have good death, whatever that means to them, and eradicate fear surrounding it. And my unique interests outside of school include theater and the arts. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Nicole. I found that really uh, tugged on my heartstrings. I think that whoever gets you as a nurse will be really blessed to have you. I can tell you have a lot of empathy and you're going to make a really great nurse. So thank you for sharing. Um, and how about you, Luke? My personal interest in nursing began within my own family. Um, so it started with elder care. I was lucky enough to look after my grandfather uh, in his last months of life. And that was the first time I realized that I was doing something that didn't feel like a job to me, even though some people do it as a job. So 
that was kind of an aha moment that I could get paid to do something that I didn't feel too much like work. Um, more recently, though, my focus has been on those who are disenfranchised and underserved. Um, I'm happy to say that once upon a time, if your focus was in mental health as a nurse, you were quite unique, but times have changed and there is a large field of nurses who make that their focus nowadays. Um, I do hope to work with addictions in particular, though. What about you, Jamie? Anything interesting on your backstory? First, I will say that I've always wanted to be a nurse. I do not remember ever wanting to be anything else. I think I've always been interested in health and healing and helping others. When it comes to my personal interest in nursing, I'm going to be honest, I have multiple. Every time we learn about a new area of nursing, um, I am intrigued. I do like geriatric care, psychiatric nursing, but as of right now, I am mostly leaning towards cardiac nursing. I like the cardiac specialty because I feel like when you comprehend the intricacies of the heart, it allows for a broader understanding of its impact on the entire body, which can be helpful in connecting the dots with patients. Thank you for tuning in to 101.7 CHLY FM, everyone. Um, we are going to take a quick break, and Lara is going to present us with some fun fast facts. Did you know that the WHO recommends 150 to 300 minutes of body movement every week? And most people can actually get the same amount of benefit from shorter bursts of more intense movement done more frequently for just a minute or two at a time. We can use the talk test to determine if you are in a moderate or intense range of activity. This is done by testing if you can hold a conversation, but if you're still breathing a little more shallowly, starting to break a sweat. Whereas vigorous activity would be when we cannot form full sentences due to being a bit more out of breath. Breaking up longer periods of sitting with one to two minutes of movement to increase our heart rate can have significant benefit. Any type of movement is better than none. Think of each step being a preparation for the next. Thank you, Lara, and welcome back to 101.7 CHLY FM. Next, I would like to ask my peers, what are your personal reasons as to why you believe others should listen to your radio show? So my personal reason that I think people should listen to this show is because we're making it for our community. And if you're listening to this right now, that means you're a part of the community. As nursing students, we're trying to bring accurate and evidence-informed health information in bite-sized and easily digestible segments to people on and around central Vancouver Island. We want to make the show interesting and to talk about things that are on the minds of those in our community. So we encourage you to let us know what you want us to talk about. On our socials, we will mention again at the end of the episode, you can let us know. Well said, Lauren. Thank you. And how about uh, you, Lara? So as Lauren mentioned, we're going to be sharing information that we're passionate about and that's relevant to our community. So we want to provide engaging content that centers um, the needs of the community in terms of health promotion. And we're really excited to like increase the health literacy of our community and provide that quality content along with humor and interviews with experts in their field. Um, I, I'm in particularly uh, passionate about sharing knowledge, and uh, I believe that even if you increase your knowledge base by 1%, it can change the world in a really big way. So get more informed and uh, become the change you want to see in the world. I love that. Very well said. Thank you, Lara. And how about you, Stella? Why should our community members listen to our radio show? Because we're going to be taking opportunities to explore topics that are trending in the community and answering questions from the community that you might also have. We'll be coming to athletic games at BIU to ask questions and see what you guys want to hear about. So if you have any ideas, let us know on our social media, or if you're on BIU's campus, come talk to us at games, or sometimes we'll be setting up tables at the cafeteria. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Please come chat with us if you see us at the games. We really want to hear from you guys. Um, we want to hear your input as well as any feedback you might have. Um, so don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Come say hi. How about you, Cedric? My personal reason and why you should listen to our radio show is that there's a ton of misinformation going around on the internet right now about various health topics. And our show will help provide you with evidence-based information that comes from reliable sources. 
and most of the time separating fact from fiction can be really difficult without extensively researching um, a subject. But our radio show will help provide you with current information that can inform you about the many health issues we're facing right now um, as a community. Yeah, that is a very good point. There is a lot of misinformation going around right now. And in our advanced technological world, it is just so difficult to know what's real and what's not. Even I, somebody who grew up with technology, I have a really hard time distinguishing what's real and what's not. And I'm finding more and more that everything that I'm seeing isn't real or is a lie or can be really uh, deceiving. So yeah, I could really feel bad for the older generations that didn't grow up with technology and now they have to use it for every aspect of their lives. Um, I feel really bad for them. If it's hard for me, I can only imagine what it's like for them. But thanks for sharing. Um, Cedric, how about you, Shan? Um, just like what everybody else has already mentioned, our show aims to deliver valuable information and insights across various aspects of healthcare. We will be providing evidence-based practices and helpful tips for maintaining overall well-being. Also, one interesting aspect of our show is the inclusion of expert guests and um, healthcare professionals who will share their knowledge, expertise, and practical advice, which will empower our listeners to make informed decisions about their health. Um, additionally, our show serves as a unique, convenient, and accessible platform for disseminating health information. We will be offering our listeners a passive yet engaging way to learn about health-related topics without the need for visual content or extensive reading. So by tuning in, our listeners can conveniently access health information and education from the comfort of their homes, cars, or any other locations with a radio receiver or internet. Yeah, you have some really good points, Shan, and thank you for mentioning um, the healthcare professionals that will be on our show. We already have a couple interviews booked, and I think it'll just make our show that much more interesting. How about you, Nicole? Anything you want to add? I think tuning into a sound constitution is a great way to stay abreast of health information that is evidence-based and pertinent to our community. That's you. And also a great way to break stigma and talk about those sometimes hard topics that we might not usually talk about in our day-to-day life but that you're super curious to know. Yeah, I think we're going to have uh, many interesting topics to talk about. Thanks for mentioning that. How about you, Luke? Um, to build on what everyone else has said, I think why I would listen to this radio show uh, boils down to our mission. And our mission is to demystify health topics. Um, as Cedric mentioned, it's harder than ever to get the facts straight. Um, and I think that's only made worse by how complicated healthcare can be. Um, so while we won't get to the bottom of every issue, I know that our team is committed to making healthcare topics easier to understand. And each of our episodes will be a great jumping off point for our listeners so that they can go and learn more about the topic on their own. What about you, Jamie? Um, I don't have much to add. I think you guys have taken all my ideas. <laughs> Um, one thing I will add, though, is that we really welcome students to come listen to our radio show. I think that as students, we can really relate to one another and um, we really face the same struggles on a day to day basis. So that would be my answer. And next, I would like to ask uh, my peers, what are you most looking forward to once you become an RN? I'm looking forward to being done school. <laughs> it's been a really long haul for me. Uh, and we still have a little bit of ways to go. But I'm excited to have more flexibility in my work schedule and to be out working with patients and clients, putting the skills and techniques I've learned into practice. I'm looking forward to being able to try new things that are out of my comfort zone. For example, eventually I'd like to try rural nursing. So having my RN will prepare me with the necessary skills for that job. I couldn't agree with you more, Lauren. It has been a really long haul and uh, I'm really excited to get to work too. I'm really tired of um, studying and sitting around personally, um, but thank you for sharing. And how about you, Lara? Great. Um, and I'm looking forward to conducting research, um, sharing that knowledge with the public. I'm really passionate about innovation and um, discovering new knowledge, new information, and particularly learning how to share that knowledge with the community in a way that makes sense. Um, and you could say that I'm just super passionate about uh, helping people become more informed about their health. Um, and I also really want to get involved in developing public health promotion campaigns as well. 
that uh, help our community build resilience. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to put all my skills um, into action and uh, really make a difference. I really love hearing about all of my peers' unique interests. I'm sure we are all going to go down different avenues, but it's just really interesting and inspiring to listen to. So thank you, Lara. How about you, Stella? I think the thing I'm most looking forward to is being able to see the change in patients. In clinical, we're often only there once a week and aren't placed with the same patient, um, even if they were in the same unit the week after. So you don't really get to see if any of the things that you've done really helped or um, what you could change. So I'm definitely looking forward to working with the same patient often um, so I can truly see the results of what we're doing and um, form better therapeutic relationships, as well as I'm looking forward to being able to pick where I get to work. As much as it's been a great learning experience being in all different units, I'm really looking forward to uh, um, specializing into pediatrics and really working there um, to kind of hone in on those skills. Thank you, Stella. I'm sure you're going to get there sooner than you know it. Um, And how about you, Cedric? Yeah, for me, um, what I'm most looking forward to uh, when I start working as an RN is to uh, specialize in an area that I'm really interested in. So for me, that would be the operating room. I want to specialize as an OR nurse eventually. Um, So I'm looking forward to kind of uh, getting lots of experience in this area, learning about all the technology that's present in operating rooms, and uh, just being part of the team in that area. And it's kind of different than other kinds of nursing, so I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. Um, And I'm also looking forward, of course, to, I think as an RN, I'll be able to use my voice a lot more to advocate for my community and to support positive change within uh, our healthcare system. That's awesome, Cedric. I can totally see you being an OR nurse, so I'm excited to see where that career path takes you. And how about you, Shan? Um, For me, I actually have a strong desire to make a positive difference in the lives of others. So so that's the one thing that I'm looking forward to once I become an RN. Also, I would like to apply the knowledge and skills that I've learned in nursing school more independently in practice. And yeah, I look forward to the continuous learning and growth opportunities that comes with being an RN. I also want to be a travel nurse one day, so I am excited to see where this profession would take me. Yeah, and I remember you saying you enjoyed um, working in the emergency. I'm sure there will be many travel opportunities for you when we graduate. Thank you, Shan. How about you, Nicole? I'm finally looking forward to putting all of this education into action, but also the endless learning I will encounter in my career. I'm excited to give back to my community and build connections with patients and be able to support them through their health journeys. Well said, Nicole. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, how about you, Luke? Um, yeah, I love what everyone said so far. <clears throat> uh, I also... I'm eager to to take all that I've learned and all that I've absorbed and turn it into my own practice. And by that, I mean, take all the elements that I appreciated the most and those who have guided me um, and turn those into a a walking, talking RN named Luke. Um, I'm excited to serve my community, as Stella said, in a more committed sense. Um, I think that is one of the challenges of being a nursing student is you're exposed to so many different fields and you get your your feet wet in a hundred different ponds. Um, but the ability to specialize and really devote all of your energy to one area that you're interested in, I think that's when the this long journey of school will will start to pay off. Um, what about you, Jamie? Well, I must admit, I'm the type of person who likes to work. I don't see myself as a school person. I have a really hard time sitting around all day studying. Um, So I'm really excited to get back to working full time and really staying active through the days. Um, And of course, making money will be oh so nice. Um, In terms of that, I'm really looking forward to eating less Mr. Noodles. Um, But more than anything, just being active through the day, I felt like Uh, you know, before school started, I felt like I was really in shape. And now I kind of get tired walking up a hill. So I'm really excited to be active once again. Thanks again for tuning into 101.7 CHLY FM. 
we are going to take a short break and Lara is going to provide us with some more fun facts. Did you know that your left lung is approximately 10% smaller than your right lung? And this is to leave enough space for your heart. And have you ever heard that your organs can be reversed? While this is a very rare condition called situs inversus and only occurs in at most one out of 10,000 people, it is quite fascinating. And this is when the body forms with a mirror image transposition of the organs. So instead of being on your left side, your heart would be on your right and your smaller lung would be on the right instead of the left. It was first documented by Aristotle way back around 380 something BC and he noticed it in animals. Not until the 1600s did we start to observe it in humans. As it stands, although this condition is unusual, it does not tend to be associated by additional medical challenges beyond creating a need for more adaptability and uh, innovation when it comes to the healthcare providers who encounter it. Hello and welcome back to CHLY 101.7 FM. I am going to ask my peers one last question here. Um, if you could advocate for anything in our healthcare system, what would it be? What are you passionate about? So something I feel really passionate about is that members of the public have greater access to primary care and having a family doctor or a nurse practitioner. So in a perfect world, I'd want everyone in Canada to have access to a primary care practitioner. So for me, advocating for and supporting initiatives to bring those services to Canadians is something that I would like to learn more about and pursue in my career. Yeah, many of my friends and family don't have a family doctor and it's scary. I think it's a really good topic to be passionate about because we definitely need some advocation going on. Thank you for sharing, Lauren. And how about you, Lara? Um, for myself, I look forward to using uh, my critical thinking skills and an expanded knowledge base to support uh, marginalized communities in general. Um, I believe that nurses have an important role when it comes to advocating for all marginalized communities alongside working toward policy change um, or positive policy change that continues to increase supports for those who need it most. Um, I believe particularly strongly in supporting and advocating for our unhoused population, particularly LGBTQ youth um, and individuals that are not getting the support that they need from their family unit. Um, I hope to work both directly with patients and clients in the community and perhaps in hospital as well, um, as well as supporting them from a research innovation angle. Um, and lastly, I feel really passionate about increasing uh, home care supports for the elderly in our community, um, as well as home uh, palliative options. I know that that's an area that um, I'd really like to advocate for expanding in our healthcare system. Yeah, well, I'm sure all of those topics you have mentioned could really use some of your advocation. I think that um, you will be making many differences in the future to come. So thank you for sharing, Lara. And how about you, Stella? I think I would definitely want to advocate for an overall growth in education into health and health problems. I think in so many topics, there's this information or just a lack of information, whether it's sexual health or mental health, um, addiction, really anything. There's just a lot of stigma or um, bias attached to it. Um, so I definitely would want to try to make sure that there is an increase in education and accessible information that is free of bias and that misinformation. Um, and there's even been some topics that have been demonized by social media or um, lack of facts. So I just want more accessible information um, that's fact-based and backed up by real evidence. Yeah, those are very good goals. Even when I'm looking up reviews on something, it's like half of them are fake now. Like you don't know what to believe and what not to believe. So I totally understand. I think those are good goals to have. Thank you, Stella. How about you, Cedric? 
Yeah, something for me that I find really important is mental health. So um, in my career, I'd like to advocate for kind of just talking about the importance of it and decreasing the stigma uh, around mental health, which often gives a negative connotation um, to people reaching out for help. Uh, I think it's really important for people to feel heard and to be more comfortable in reaching out for help in regards to their mental health. And um, I think that it's something that we're also all responsible for um, being in healthcare because it's a, a growing issue right now within our communities. Yeah, there's really no denying that. And I think it's so great that more and more people are becoming so interested in mental health. I think it's always going to be a never ending problem around the globe and we could always use more resources. Um, so thank you for sharing, Cedric. How about you, Shan? Um, similar to Cedric, uh, one thing that I would like to advocate for in healthcare is the stigma around mental health. Um, I really want to break the stereotypes and language around people experiencing mental illnesses. Um, it will be helpful to address the misconceptions surrounding mental health and promote um, understanding and empathy to everyone. And that would create a more supportive environment for individuals experiencing mental health challenges. Absolutely. I think we've come a far way, but we still have a very long way to go. And I just hope that we keep on steering in the right direction and breaking those stigmas. So thank you um, for sharing, Chan. How about you, Nicole? Something that I would like to advocate for in healthcare is more timely, accessible mental health resources as well but particularly for our child and youth population. I believe that supporting our youth early can help um, develop thriving, um, healthy adults. I'm really intrigued that you're all um, so interested in mental health. I guess you really don't know someone until you ask them. <laughs> so thank you for sharing, um, Nicole. How about you, Luke? Yeah. Um... Everyone has, has had such good points, and uh, there's a lot of overlap. I guess one area that I'm drawn to that hasn't been mentioned yet is the actual advocation of our healthcare system itself. Um, I would like to advocate on a more federal level for more funding uh, for, for healthcare. Um, I, particularly, I'd like to see us overcome this poor ratio of client to staff. Um, I think to ensure that our population gets the best health care that it can, uh, the staffing issue needs to be addressed in a long-term focus or through a long lens. Um, and the second thing I'd like to advocate for is making our healthcare system more pandemic uh, resilient. So by that, I would just say that COVID was in a sense, the ultimate pressure test of our system. And I think, the onus is on us as the new generation to take the lessons we learned from COVID and apply those to the system. Uh, because epidemiology teaches us that it's just a matter of time until another pandemic will rear its ugly head. And I think it's um, due diligence to make sure that we're prepared to make sure the healthcare system is strong in the face of the next pandemic uh, whenever it arrives. Yeah, what about you, Jamie? I really like what you said, Luke. My main focus is advocating, I think, for people facing financial barriers um, to make sure everyone has access to medical services in our healthcare system is something I'm really passionate about. I firmly believe that everyone, regardless of their socioeconomic status, should have the right to quality health care without worrying about the cost. So I really believe by addressing these financial barriers head on, we would be able to strive to build a healthcare system that prioritizes inclusivity and provides equitable and accessible healthcare for all individuals, irrespective of their economic circumstances. And so our next question, um, kind of a fun question, what would you be doing if you were not becoming a nurse? Um, so I actually worked in healthcare in a clinic doing administrative work before I was accepted into nursing school. I really enjoyed the work and the staff, and I think I would still be doing that. But uh, my other passion outside of healthcare is I love reading. I love novels, I love nonfiction, I love fiction. Uh, so if I was not becoming a nurse, I would like to think that I would be somewhere in Italy, relaxing in a villa, overlooking the countryside, 
writing fantasy fiction novels full of exciting adventure and romance. That really does sound like the life, Lauren. Um, perhaps if you had that career, you would have ended up bored and you were just meant to be a nurse. But thank you for sharing. Um, and how about you, Lara? Well, I love that. <laughs> um, way to paint a picture. So if I was not becoming a nurse, um, I imagine that on one hand, I would be continuing with my career as a yoga therapist, which is what I was up to prior to um, coming to nursing school at VIU. Um, but I definitely would have chosen another area of academics, I think. Um, so I either would have continued with graduate school in psychology or maybe started fresh with um, a biology degree, something of that nature. Um, yeah, so I've been studying yoga for over 22 years, which is crazy to think. Um, and it's really helped me cope with stress over the years. So yoga practice is like an incredibly important component of my daily life and it influences my way of being. Um, and while I was content to some extent while I was teaching yoga and promoting health in that capacity, I really found myself like yearning for more, um, you know, expansion of my mind and so on. And I really felt called back into the academic space and I feel really, really, really grateful and content here. And I feel so, um, supported in terms of like building self-awareness and growth and so on. And I really feel like nurses, nursing is my calling. And I look forward to whatever everything that comes next. I agree. I think nursing is your calling as well, Lara. Thank you for sharing. How about you, Stella? Yeah, so I have wanted to be a nurse for a very long time. So when I thought about this, I went to my dream job before I wanted to be a nurse, which was a fashion designer. This was when I was in grade six, but um, all I wanted to do was create outfits and designs. Um, I would draw pictures most being terrible since I couldn't draw, I still can't, but I tried. Um, but this dream ended when I learned how to sew, but really hated everything I made because it didn't look how I pictured it or how the professionals did it. Um, but safe to say that dream ended. Um, however, that's really been the only other job that I've thought about, and I've only really thought about nursing since. Um, well, that and being a vet, when I was really young, I swore I could talk to animals, but that is long gone. <laughs> so really, I've only thought about being a nurse, um, but the little kid in me would have loved to be a fashion designer if I didn't have that dream. That made me smile, Stella. I'm also not the greatest artist, and I feel like it's one of those careers where you need to be good at what you do if you're going to get anywhere. So I think you made the right call. Thank you for sharing. How about you, Cedric? Yeah, if I uh, didn't go into nursing, I think I would have gone into marine biology. Um, I've always really liked the ocean, and I find the biodiversity uh, of the ocean just incredible. Um, I think it's pretty cool that the ocean takes so much uh, of our planet's space, but we, we know so little about it, and there's still so many things that we have yet to discover. Um, and I could totally imagine myself being on a boat in the middle of nowhere researching animals. I think it would be really cool. That would be super cool. I like the outdoors. I know you do too. And although I don't really like the ocean, I think that sounds like that would be a super cool career. And it's not to say, since we both like the outdoors so much, that perhaps our past will end up taking us somewhere that uh, we end up working outdoors or living somewhere that is rural or in the wilderness. I could see us both doing that. So thank you for sharing, Cedric. And how about you, Shan? Um, I actually did engineering before going to nursing school. Um, but I stopped after a year because I felt like it wasn't for me and I was so young at that time. Um, yeah, but if I were if I weren't in nursing school, maybe I would have tried engineering again. Um, it was actually my dream profession ever since I was a kid. Um, but yeah, I am actually very happy with where I am right now in nursing. Oh wow, that's really impressive, Shan. Um, I never knew that you were in engineer school. Um, thank you for sharing. I'm glad that you're happy where you're at right now, and I'm sure you will get to where you want to be. So how about um, you, Nicole? If I were not becoming a nurse right now, I might still be a hairstylist, but I was so pulled in this direction because I just wanted to 
do more and care for people on such a deeper level. I've always had that draw to care and nurture. And this is my calling. There's no, no question about it. But in another life, if I were to actually pursue my dreams, I would probably be on stage on Broadway, singing and dancing my way through life. However, <laughs> this is real life and I wouldn't change it for the world. I actually didn't know that you're a hairstylist, um, but I agree with you. I think that you worked so hard to be here and um, that you will continue to persevere. So thank you for sharing, Nicole. And how about you, Luke? Well, I guess I'll, I'll pick up where Nicole left off. Um, it's, it's never too late. You could do a, a nursing musical, Nicole, but still an option. Um, man, there's been so many good answers. It's hard to follow. Um, I think I'll just fall back on if I wasn't in nursing school, I would, I would probably be doing the career that I did previously. Um, so I worked in group homes for kids that are in foster care, uh, particularly people struggling with mental illness. Um, I did that job for a, a decent number of years and I found it rewarding and as you could expect, quite challenging. Um, and I guess I felt trapped in a sense that I was, I could be using my efforts to help more people. Um, so I guess I would like to institute change on a larger scale, uh, which as our last question, you know, touched on this, this notion of advocacy. And I think as a nurse, you get to have a lot of say in the lives that you affect and where your efforts go to. Um, knock on wood, maybe nursing won't be my last career, but um, I've gone through a few already. Yeah, that's a great question. Jamie, what about you? Um, you know what? I think that I would have wanted to be a vet. I love animals, and I know some of you have kind of said the same thing. Um, I would probably be a vet assistant, wondering if I could go to vet school. I guess it's actually not too late. I could go to vet school after my nursing degree, but um, I think I'll stick to nursing. But um, yeah, I think that that would have been, that's the only thing I could really think of. I would like working with animals, so. Thank you for tuning in to A Sound Constitution here on CHLY 101.7 FM a show where we focus on health topics important to our community. This season, we are made up of eight third-year VIU nursing students, and our goal is to demystify health issues and address common misconceptions by sharing evidence-informed information from a variety of reliable resources. And we wanted to finish our episode with a short five-minute inspiring motivational TED Talk. Um, it is by... Andrew Puddicombe, and it is called All It Takes Is 10 Minutes. It is about um, a meditation technique used to um, stop ourselves from getting distracted. I did this at home and I found it to be very useful, so I thought I'd share. I hope you enjoy. We live in an incredibly busy world. The, the pace of life is often frantic. Our minds are always busy and we're always doing something. So with that in mind, I'd like you just to take a moment to think, when did you last take any time to do nothing? Just 10 minutes, undisturbed. And when I say nothing, I do mean nothing. So that's no emailing, texting, no internet, no TV, no chatting, no eating, no reading. Not even sitting there reminiscing about the past or planning for the future. Simply doing nothing. The sad fact is that we are so distracted that we're no longer present in the world in which we live. We miss out on the things that are most important to us. And the crazy thing is that everybody just assumes, well, that's the way life is, so we just kind of got to get on with it. But that's really not how it has to be. So I was about 11 when I went along to my first meditation class. And trust me, it had all the stereotypes that you can imagine, the sitting cross-legged on the floor, the incense, the herbal tea, the vegetarians, the whole deal. But um, 
my mum was going and I was intrigued, so I went along with her. I'd also seen a few kung fu movies, and secretly I kind of thought I might be able to learn how to fly, but I was very young <laughs> at the time, you know. Now, as I was there, you know, I guess like a lot of people, I assumed that it was just an aspirin for the mind. You get stressed, you do some meditation. I hadn't really thought that it could be sort of preventative in nature. Until I was about sort of 20, when a number of things happened in my life in quite quick succession, really serious things, which just flipped my life upside down. And all of a sudden, I was inundated with thoughts, inundated with difficult emotions that I didn't know how to cope with. Every time I sort of pushed one down, another one would just sort of pop back up again. It was a really very stressful time. I guess we all deal with stress in different ways. Some people will bury themselves in work, grateful for the the distraction. Others will turn to their friends, their family, looking for support. Some people hit the bottle, start taking medication. My own way of dealing with it was to become a monk. So I quit my degree. I headed off to the Himalayas. I became a monk, and I started studying meditation. People often ask me, you know, what I learned from that time. Well, obviously it changed things, you know. Let's face it. Becoming a celibate monk is going to change a number of things. But it was more than that. You know, it it taught me, it gave me a greater appreciation and understanding for the present moment. By that, I mean not being lost in thought, not being distracted, not being overwhelmed by difficult emotions, but instead learning how to be in the here and now, how to be mindful, how to be present. I think the present moment is so underrated. It sounds so ordinary. And yet we spend so little time in the present moment that it's anything but ordinary. There was a a research paper that came out of Harvard just recently that said on average our minds are lost in thought almost 47% of the time. 47%. At the same time, this sort of constant mind wandering is also a direct cause of unhappiness. Now, We're not here for that long anyway. But to spend almost half of our life lost in thought and potentially quite unhappy, I don't know, it just kind of seems tragic, actually, especially when there's something we can do about it. When there's a, a positive, practical, achievable, scientifically proven technique which allows our mind to be more healthy, to be more mindful and less distracted. And the beauty of it is that even though it kind of need only take about 10 minutes a day, it impacts our entire life. But we need to know how to do it. We need an exercise. We need a framework to learn how to be more mindful. That's essentially what meditation is. It's familiarizing ourselves with the present moment. But we also need to know how to approach it in the right way to get the best from it. And that's what these are for, in case you've been wondering. Because most people assume... The meditation is all about sort of stopping thoughts, getting rid of emotions, somehow controlling the mind. But actually, it's quite different from that. It's more about sort of stepping back, sort of seeing the thought clearly, witnessing it coming and going, emotions coming and going without judgment, but with a relaxed, focused mind. So, for example, right now, if I focus too much, on the balls, then there's no way that I can relax and talk to you at the same time. Equally, if I relax too much talking to you, then there's no way I can focus on the balls. I'm going to drop them. Now, in life and in meditation, there'll be times when the focus becomes a little bit too intense and life starts to feel a bit like this. It's a very uncomfortable way to live life when we get this tight and stressed. At other times, we might take our foot off the gas a little bit too much. And things just become a little bit like this. And of course, in meditation, we can end up falling asleep. So we're looking for a balance of focused relaxation where we can allow thoughts to come and go without all the usual involvement. Now, what usually happens when we're learning to be mindful is that we get distracted by a thought. Let's say this is an anxious thought. So everything's going fine, and then we see the anxious thought, and it's like, oh, I didn't realize I was worried about that. You go back to it, repeat it. Oh, I am worried. Oh, I really am worried. Wow, there's so much anxiety. And before we know it, right, we're anxious about feeling anxious. You know, this is crazy. We do this all the time, even on an everyday kind of level. If you think about the last time, I don't know, you had a wobbly tooth. You know it's wobbly. 
and you know that it hurts. But what do you do every 20, 30 seconds? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It does hurt. And we reinforce the storyline, right? And we just keep telling ourselves. And we do it all the time. And it's only in learning to watch the mind in this way that we can start to let go of those storylines and patterns of mind. But when you sit down and you watch the mind in this way, you might see many different patterns. You might find a mind that's really sort of restless and the whole time. You know, don't be surprised if you feel a bit agitated in your body when you sit down to do nothing and your mind feels like that. You might find a mind that's very sort of dull and boring and it's just almost mechanical. It just sort of seems it's as if you're just sort of getting up, going to work, eat, sleep, get up, up. Or it might just be that one little nagging thought that just goes round and round and round to your mind. Whatever it is, meditation offers the opportunity, the potential to step back and to get a different perspective, to see that things aren't always as they appear. You know, we can't change every little thing that happens to us in life. But we can change the way that we experience it. That's the potential of meditation, of mindfulness. You don't have to burn any incense, and you definitely don't have to sit on the floor. All you need to do is to take 10 minutes out a day to step back, to familiarize yourself with the present moment so that you get to experience a greater sense of focus, calm, and clarity in your life. Thank you very much. I hope that was as inspiring for you as it was for me. Thank you to our listeners for taking the time to listen and getting to know each of us here at A Sound Constitution, and thank you to my peers for sharing a bit about yourselves. For details and show notes from today's episode or to follow along on what's coming up this season, check out our Facebook page at A Sound Constitution, Instagram at C H L Y A Sound Constitution. We want to remind our listeners that the information presented in this episode is for educational purposes only and does not replace the advice of your primary healthcare professional. Thanks again, and we all hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.